Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about my favourite parts from this book, Teaching Math at a Distance by Teresa Wills. If you're interested in finding out my favourite parts about this book, then please keep on watching. So I've been following Teresa Wills online uh, for a few years and she is a very experienced educator when it comes to teaching online. I've listened to her recordings of her lessons and I have learned so much about teaching online from her. So I thought as soon as this book came out, I had to buy it. And I'm just going to share some of the highlights that I absolutely love. Um, I highly recommend you buy the book. So it's a very comprehensive book that has a lot of guidance uh, in terms of teaching online. But do you know what? I think that a lot of these strategies can actually be used in person as well. So even though many of us are not teaching online anymore, I still recommend that you buy the book because she outlines good instructional strategies. And this is just basically excellent pedagogy. Even though most schools, I think at the moment, are back in person, there are still going to be the odd occasions where schools will go online. And I was just watching the Melbourne News the other day in Australia, and there was some big race on. So, so the local school is going to be closed for a week because of this event, and their school is going to be online. So I think we're beginning to realize that we can actually still continue learning online, even if the physical brick and mortar schools are closed uh, for any particular reason. OK, so one of the very important ideas she outlines that I firmly believe in as well is the setting expectations and norms for students. And she's got this table on page 36 where she outlines sample expectations using asset-based versus restrictive language. And so if you attend or listen to any of her lessons, she uses asset-based language. What does that mean? I'll give you some examples that Teresa provides. So expectations using asset-based language, use kind and respectful language, rather than don't be mean and disrespectful. Another example is reduce or eliminate background noise. And as opposed to don't play music or have loud noises in the background. So more asset-based language includes raise your virtual hand when you want to speak. Be a cyber hero when someone needs help. Mistakes happen. Use control Z to undo. And use your away message when you're away from the keyboard as opposed to this language, which is not assets based. No cyberbullying. Don't delete anything. Do not leave during class time. In an online environment, it's so important to try and foster uh, safety and security. And so we want to try to use assets based language. And then Teresa suggests these following categories when you're actually co-creating some norms and protocols with your students. They're similar to the ones that I use, but I love how she's included safety. So safety is a category when co-creating essential agreements, kindness and community, student agency, focus and productivity, lesson flow, small group instruction and breakout rooms patience and productive struggle, and materials and manipulatives management. So she talks about each of these categories in detail, but I love these categories in trying to set up expectations with your students and using these categories to co-create some essential agreements. Now, some other parts that I like about the book, I'm just going to flip over, are all the icebreakers. So if you actually go on to Teresa's website, she has so many templates that you can just freely use. She's been really generous in sharing her ideas with the world and ready-made templates. So she's got icebreakers, uh, lots of icebreakers to help students kind of feel more safe and secure and ready for learning. Um She's got well-being check-ins as well. So if you've had a look at any of her resources, a lot of the learning experiences are anonymous, which I love. So normally there's a prompt and then you move either a smiley face or a sad face around and it's normally anonymous. So I think that that anonymity 
allow students to feel safer and, and answering. And some other ideas that I love is the tweet board. This is on page 123. So she just uses the prompt, what is everything you want to know about triangles? And then you get students to answer but it has to be really short. So that's why she calls it a tweet board. So everything that you know about triangles and then with student responses, organizing them into groups. So sorting student answers once they've all responded. Uh, another activity that I love that she has is defend your choice, uh, where students anonymously have to choose or select uh, a, an answer or a prompt or a visual and then they have to justify it and a lot of the time these prompts have no one correct answer or four of these prompts or visuals could be uh, correct or selected based on their reasoning and then the next activity that I absolutely love is she gives five representations of a function so there is the graphical, the tabular, the algebraic, and then the visual. And it's a particular function, y equals 4x plus 4. She gives the same prompt to everybody. But the question is, write a real world story problem here. So students have the function. They have five different representations of it. But they have to come up with a story that will represent that particular function. So giving the representations and then students have to come up with the questions. So there are so many ideas. I've just touched on just a few. You can see all my post-it notes of all of the wonderful ideas that I want to incorporate into my own practice. Uh, thank you so much for joining me again this week. Thank you, Teresa for sharing your beautiful ideas with the world so that we can become better educators in the online environment as well as the in-person environment. Thank you again for joining me and I hope to see you next time.